Thanks for your patience, everyone. It looks like we are now ready to get started. Uh, once again, my name is Ian Schaefer. I'm here with UDA Technologies, and I'm one of the senior product specialists here at UDA. I've been working with the company now for uh, almost longer than I wish to admit, uh, probably about nine years at this point. Joining me today, though, of course, we've got Jordan Davis, one of our other senior product specialists here with us today. Hey, everyone. And uh, Sydney Dorsey, who's actually probably our star um, specialist working with Construction Online, she's actually going to be answering questions for us today as well. So again, just to draw your guys' attention to it as we're going through the webinar, there is a questions panel here in GoToWebinar. If you guys pull up that questions panel, send in your questions, Sydney will be able to answer most of them or flag some of them so that we can actually go over them in the webinar itself and potentially some after the webinar. Now, of course, our focus today is taking a look at some, some of the features on the new Construction Online Navigation, specifically pertaining to schedules and calendars. Now, we're going to start big. We're going to take a look at some of the overview tools. We're going to kind of focus in on some of the project-specific information, which is why we're starting today's webinar here with the company calendar and the views available to us here under calendars and schedules. Now we'll kind of again be be navigating around some of these various different areas. So if you guys do have questions or you'd like to see some of the specifics, let us know. We'll do our best to cover those questions or those topics as we go. Otherwise, we're going to dive in here in just a couple of moments. Now as we're working, again, we're going to be taking a look at the new Construction Online Navigation, highlighting some of the great features available in this that are maybe a little different than we've had available in Construction Online Classic for the past several years. And we made this change or this shift gradually over the past year or so as we've been working with now over 550,000 users to provide excellent management tools for handling everybody's schedules. And by that, I do mean all of the activity that happens on projects. Now, as we take a look, we have Gantt chart scheduling available on Construction Online, and we'll definitely take a look at setting up those Gantt chart schedules and, and working through that. Somebody's already correcting my numbers in this case, too, <laughs> which is great. Um, <clears throat> but as we're working through these things, uh, we'll be taking a look at the Gantt chart schedules. We'll be taking a look at company calendars, project-specific calendars, custom calendars, and seeing everything that shows up on here. Now, as I mentioned, in Construction Online, which the corrected 650,000 <laughs> users are actively working with today, the, uh, the Construction Online company calendar is designed for administrators to be able to see not just everything that's going on for the, for the company as a whole, but who's working where. Now, when you come to the company overview and switch over to the calendars and schedules portion of that overview, you'll actually see where everybody's working, what jobs we're working on, and most of this information is going to be color-coded and provided for you either by job or by calendar, again, some of those custom calendars, to give you a little bit more information at a glance as soon as you touch this page. Now, on the calendar itself, just like with most calendars, like your Google calendars or your Outlook calendars or anything like that that you guys might be working with, the calendar has a day view, a week view, a month view, a year view, and an agenda view. Now, the primary differences between these are pretty straightforward once you guys click into them. On the day view, it just shows all of our timed events, meetings, and appointments for today in a big lump sum value for all the different all-day activities based on which projects have tasks on this day. For example, in this case, I have two for Lot 1 Creekwood Country Estates. No specific appointments for the day, though, so we're pretty clear here. If we step into the week view, again, we're taking kind of a step back a little bit, and we can see larger scale views in this case. Month view, again, further back now. We're zooming out a little bit further to see everything for the month of February in 2019. Again, color-coded by project. Most of these are going to be that Lot 1 Creekwood Country Estates. I also have a couple of tasks in here for uh, this is Lot 185 Baldwin Park. A couple of jobs that we've got going on right now. And you can just click onto the task to see the information. Again, zooming out a little further still, we have a year view. And this is designed to give you a little bit of an idea on how active your team is going to be over a given period of time. It's sort of like a heat map in this case with, as you can see up along the top, the darker red means that our team is going to be much, much busier. The closer to the beginning, or darker green, means that we've got a little bit of a light load. If the day is not colored in at all, that means there's nothing going on, and we need to find some stuff to work on. 
the agenda view, again, this is a little bit of a different way of looking at all the information. And the agenda view is designed to just show you all the individual tasks in an infinitely scrolling list of activity in here. So as you guys are looking through this, it's all broken out by day and shows you all the activity that you have going on for the day, by job, how long the activities are, and so on and so forth. But what you see on the agenda view is, again, just a list, almost like you'll see in the game plan, which we'll kind of touch base on here in just a few moments. But what is all this information that we're looking at in here? What is, where does it all come from and what does it all mean? Well, to begin with, it's important, let's go back to today, it's important to figure out which calendars and schedules we're looking at and how we want to add those in to the projects that we're looking at here on the company calendar. Diving into and seeing some of the information here, what are we looking at? Now, as you saw earlier, it's very easy to figure out what projects or what's associated with these tasks just by clicking on the task itself. This just gives you a quick overview for the activity. I'm the creator. This is the project. Here's the date range for it. From here, we can actually click into the schedule if we want to see the Gantt chart. And we'll dive into this here in just a couple of moments as well. Before we do that, though, these activities that you see spanning multiple days, these are what we would consider all-day activities. Sometimes you'll have individual tasks on here as well. You can either add or create them just by clicking on to the calendar date that you need to add the activity for, give the activity a name or the event a name, and then create it here. If we go into more options, you'll actually see greater levels of detail for what we're adding in here. You'll also see a list for all the different calendars that we have available for adding this activity. This might be a meeting specific to, again, maybe Lot 1 Creekwood Country Estates. This might just be a job site meeting. Job meeting. And you can choose some of the specifics in here as well if you like. Maybe, in this case, Let's set it for Friday at 3 p.m. We're going to have the meeting. And uh, let's change this a little bit to call it a little webinar because that's when our next webinar is going to be. <laughs> um, as you're going through and creating these activities, though, you've got a lot of great options in here for not just adjusting or setting times or dates. You can set them as private so that it only shows up for you and the other people that you assign as resources up here at the top. You'll also be able to set it as a repeating event, just in case this is a meeting that you'd like to happen every week or on a very regular basis. So repeatable activities are a great way for going through and setting up things like um, maybe staff meetings, weekly staff meetings. We have those on a regular basis, so we could set up all of the repeating events to track those. You'll also have the ability to set up like once maybe monthly reviews or recaps or whatever else may need to be included in there as well. Required safety meetings. Absolutely. Be a good example. A perfect example in this case. And of course, because these events are going on to our calendar, it's important to also include reminders for these, which could be emails or text messages or some additional notification to all of the people involved. Just simply click here to create a reminder. And when you put this information together, and choose how far in advance you'd like that reminder to go out. Clicking Create will trigger this when the given time frame shows up. So again, you can set the reminder to send everybody an email or shoot them a text message maybe the morning of your meetings. We could do it uh, zero days before, maybe just set it out at 11 o'clock so that everybody knows to make that 3 o'clock meeting. You can even put in the message here that you'd like to include via email or text message and then click create to create those reminders as well. Now, all of this information, uh, let's actually delete the reminder. All of this information is going to show up uh, back in the activity itself as well. There we are. It's even still carrying that color coded option in there as well. This one would now show up on the day view down in the, the typical work day at three o'clock. Just gives us that expanded view and everything like that as well. Um, but again, these are all job specific so far. Any of the additional information that you want to see, you can gather just by clicking on the activity and seeing the details for it. You can also turn on and off various different calendars to show on this company calendar using the show hide calendars option. Now the show hide calendars option is going to adjust all the information that you've got for all of your active projects, for any custom calendars that you have, or even custom calendars that you would like to add in this case. Like perhaps you've got a warranty calendar that you want to go ahead and put together and you guys wanted to go ahead and schedule out all of your visits and, and reviews and whatever else might be included. 
This for me has always been a valuable addition to my, my company calendar because this is just a great reminder to stay out in front of any warranty requests and to make sure that we always have happy customers because these appointments that I'm putting on my warranty calendar can all be assigned to one person. We can set it up here so that um, maybe Harry is responsible for having all of these things together. The, the calendar name would be Warranty visits. And ultimately what I want Harry to go do is just make sure that he's going to all of our older jobs on a regular basis. Again, think repeat events in this case. And just making sure that everything on that project is, is excellent for the customers. I always want them to be thrilled with the ongoing results that we provide. And the easiest way to do that is to be in, the, in front of them before they have any questions or problems or anything like that, and we can discuss them. I also find that this works fantastically well for remodelers because if you have repeat customers, and most of us do, those repeat customers are going to be more likely to work with you if you show up and verify your work regularly over time. If they're always happy with the results and, they, and you show that you're always in, invested in making sure that they're happy with the results, then again, it leads to more sales down the road and we can keep up with these things better. So again, keeping all of this information available on the calendar is a, is a great way to get that information synced up. You'll also find, for those of you working with Google calendars or Outlook calendars, that there's an easy way to link this information to a Google calendar or an Outlook calendar right here as well. All you have to do is check the box. And if you have it linked, It'll actually create the calendar for the same information and update those activities as you work through a lot of these details. So again, this just provides you all that information well in advance. And even if you have customers or subs or even other team members who aren't actively involved in Construction Online, you can spoon feed them everything that they're missing out on by not being a contributor here just by simply linking these, these calendars directly. Dave. Now again, as you're working through this, if you need to make any adjustments or anything like that to one of the existing calendars, Sydney, here's one for you, for example, you can actually click on the options over here to adjust things like color coding on the projects, or perhaps this is linked on the, the project itself. But if you're looking in here, you can also make some additional adjustments on the calendars, um, both at the top level here under show hide columns, or through some of the setting options that you guys have available in here as well. Now, of course, this is company calendar. This is broad view. Everything that has a date on it will show up somewhere on this calendar. This means that inspections that you have as milestones in your schedule will be here. The scheduled tasks, obviously those are going to be here too. We have punch lists showing up, meetings showing up in here as well. As you scroll through, I'm sure you'll find selection deadlines or due dates, change order due dates. Everything lives on the company calendar. This changes a little bit when you drill down into a specific project because the project calendar will look a little bit more specific in this case. Now when you come into it, you still see all the same types of events, the same types of activities will still be here. And you can obviously add to this or adjust this as needed simply by, again, clicking on these tasks and following the link right here in the middle of the task description to get to that particular item if you need to make some adjustments. Very straightforward, easy to work with tools in this case for redirecting you where you want to be. And all of this information still shows up on the, the calendar here. This is just, again, job specific. I find that project managers will get a little bit more out of this when they're coming to the job calendar itself to figure out what's going on right now. As opposed to those of us who are running the company needing to see the bird's eye view on the company calendar. Now, of course, you'll have both of these options available and each of them provides value in different ways, but both of them also include an option here to filter by resource so that even if we see everything, we can filter this down to an individual's calendar as well, simply by clicking on the resources that we've been assigning in here too. Now the assigned resource can be done, again, on the activity. If we open these up, there's a space where we can assign resources here. Like in this case, maybe I wanna make sure that I have all of my team involved in this particular job. So we can go in there and choose, uh, who else do we have? Neil, Jason, Donnie, and several other individuals in here as well. 
as we save that, that activity now has all those resources assigned. Those resources will show up in my filter option as well so that I can go through and choose them if I wanted to see, in this case, maybe Neil's calendar. I could filter it down and just see his tasks on this job, or we could go back to the company calendar and see his tasks on all jobs. Again, fantastic way to figure out who is where and who's working on what. Um, I find one of the other value points that this adds over something like a Google Calendar or a, an Outlook Calendar is this is designed to have all of these different pieces of information in one place. So the filter options that we provide and the, the resources that you can include in this case give you the ability to have company calendars, but you could also have job specific calendars. It's kind of like having each individual resource calendar on here as well. I have one. Jordan, he has one. Mm -hmm. Sydney has her calendar as well. And it just allows us to align this however we are most comfortable. Some of us like to see calendars broken out by person. We can do that. Some of us prefer to have calendars broken out by job. We can do that too. Some of us prefer to have calendars broken out by task type or something along those lines. Also an easy option. You can actually come into and choose what kind of calendar activities we're going to be showing here, what kind of deadlines we have. Again, all of this is customizable. It's very flexible how all of this information kind of combines and joins together. And this is, again, one of the huge advantages to working within some of these systems and settings because here you can make it show however it is that you are most comfortable seeing information and, and digesting this data. Again, any kind of detail or depth that you would like, you can come into and work with this as well. Now, there are a couple of questions here from some of our, um, looks like longtime users. In this one instance, we've got the company calendar. Does it sync between construction suite and construction online? And the answer to that is yes, it does. All you have to do is make sure that your, your project in suite and your project online are the same, or if it's company tasks, you just don't assign the task to a project and it shows up on your company calendar when it comes up. You'll also be able to take schedules created on the desktop and publish them to online or vice versa, download those schedules back to, to the desktop as well if you'd like. You have a ton of additional options here too. So if we come back into and start taking a look at the scheduling features, Scheduling gives you the ability to put together a full Gantt chart schedule in Construction Online or in Construction Suite or import it from systems like Microsoft Project. Now what all of these things share is they all have tasks with work days or the number of days or durations with predecessor relationships linking all these tasks together. Now I'm going to go full screen with this for a moment since we're shifting into Gantt views. Because here in the Gantt view schedule, we're looking at the left side where we've got the task information, right side where we've actually got the Gantt chart. And you can see across the top of the Gantt chart that we have all the dates and everything like that spanning out through the duration of this job. All you have to do is scroll along the bottom to see what the duration looks like. Or more importantly, when you scroll down through the schedule, if you click on a task, it jumps to that date on the Gantt chart. So again, navigating through is very straightforward and very direct. It gives us some clear ways to be able to see what we are planning at any given time. And you'll notice that there's a lot of additional visual clues here on the schedule for us to work with as well. So as we're stepping through and we're taking a look at all this different stuff, you can actually work with things like milestones here representing inspections that we might have on the job or we've got other tasks on here as well. Or if we wanted to come into and work with um, maybe a couple of different uh, task groups or something like that, we can add groups as well for just kind of connecting all of these things in together. Uh, here we're looking at, we've got foundation and framing, a lot of things in here for foundation. And then there's framing. So if we wanted to take this and add in a new group, new group, we're gonna make this framing we can collect all of those framing tasks together under this new group so that we can expand and collapse all of our framing tasks and keep better track of everything that we're working on here. Now again, what you'll find in Construction Online as we're working through this, Construction Online has a different way of representing or showing visually groups and tasks on the calendar. Groups are always going to be represented here by a kind of a bracket resting on top of all the activities within the group. The tasks always show as like a blocked off period of time. 
So here, for example, this framing labor task starts on the 18th of February and stretches out through the, it actually finishes on the 5th of March, which represents in this case 12 work days. And it's dependent on task 24, which is the slab inspection for starting. Now, right now it's an independent task. It's not part of my framing group yet, but of course we can always come into and right click and indent the task to make it part of that group. Now, the second we do that, you'll notice there's a shift. The group now spans the same time frame as this framing labor task because that framing labor task is now part of the group and it defines the group. And that's what you'll find as you're working with these two. The group by itself, if it's empty, it has no work days. It has no start date. It has nothing. And it doesn't have this information until you start to add tasks to it. Again, most of those tasks you can add just by right-clicking and indenting those tasks. Again, we talked about this earlier in the week and last week with the webinars. Now that you have this ability to right-click, it makes all of these things so much simpler as you're working through them. Mm -hmm. So again, right-click on everything. In fact, in a lot of these cases, you'll be able to just do so easily or quickly either on creation or like now when I'm trying to clean up my list a little bit and I can collapse it down and expand it back out again. It, again, it's just making this information so much easier to follow, which is one of the primary pieces that we're looking for in Construction Online. And as we're working through the schedules, you'll be able to see this information kind of coming together and seeing all the information that we have available here as well. Now, of course, this is a schedule that we're working on, and this one is completed. And so we can, we can see all the different tasks, or I say that it's completed. The work isn't done. The schedule has been built. Mm -hmm. and so what we're looking at is we're just kind of coming in and making some adjustments and some changes. But of course, you'll also see in here that sometimes delays may happen. Now, adjustments like that to your scheduled tasks are extremely easy to make. In fact, as you're working through this, there's little dots at the end of these tasks representing a grabbing point on the task. They allow you to stretch these tasks out or adjust your durations just by simply grabbing onto the task there where you see those little dots showing up. You'll be able to do this for any of the tasks to adjust the, the duration for the tasks. And as you're moving them around from here, you can also grab onto the middle of the task if you wanted to adjust all of the information, the start date, the end date, <coughs> just moving them left to right on there to represent your start points. Yeah, and this is really convenient because any updates to durations in the schedule immediately carry back across to the calendar. So you don't have to go through and update, say, multiple all-day events just to let someone know that a schedule task has been either pushed back a day or you know maybe you'd have to go in and delete some all-day events in your previous calendar system just to let people know, oh, hey, we finished... Uh, uh, securing the construction financing a day or two early, so we're ready to move on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge, huge time saver to just adjust the schedule in one place and then have that communicate out everywhere in the system. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that also makes this easier to, to operate with or to work with than the traditional calendars like a Google Calendar or something like that that we, we might be working with is here. We have predecessor relationships connecting all these tasks together. In this case, for example, my project phone is going to be installed once task five is finished. Five's finish is when I can start this task. Now, how that's represented is a small arrow that actually goes from task number five. It's, um, let's shrink this down just a little. Zoom over. So task number five has an arrow that's actually coming out of the front and connects to this task. This task then has a follow-up task of 11, if we expand it back out again, we can see that the predecessor relationship here, 10's finish is when I can start construction utility. That's what the FS represents, by the way, finish to start. Task ID is gonna be the number over here on the left side. The predecessor's task ID is right here. And then the relationship type is what comes next. Finish to start is the most common relationship type. When 10 is finished, I can start this one. The next task, when 11 is finished, or when construction utilities is finished, I can start delivering my portable restrooms. When portable restrooms are installed, we'll hang signage, and so on through. We can connect everything together in the same manner, and you'll actually find that assigning a predecessor relationship is a much, much faster way of getting all of your start dates set up as well. So if we come into and take a look at the portable job site office, for example, right now this doesn't have any dependencies. And I know that it actually does. 
maybe in this case, we need to have the office set up, first of all, uh, maybe like right after the financing is complete. So task four might be my predecessor for the job site office. This is an easy one to do. All we do is say task four is my predecessor. The relationship type is finish to start, represented here by FS. When you hit enter, the connection is made. The task automatically updates to be as soon as task number four is finished. Four's finish is now when I'm starting the portable job site office. That's when it shows up on the job site. You can also do plus or minus a number of days as well, just in case you want to build in a lead time or a lag time or something along those lines as well. So in this case, for example, if site work is going to begin after the builder's risk insurance is applied for or received, we might want to wait a couple of days to make sure that we actually have all the paperwork in order. In this case, site work is still dependent on task number five, builder's risk. It's still a finish to start relationship, but now we're gonna add two days, literally plus two days. And this creates that additional two day gap. It's going to delay my activity by two days. It's also gonna delay everything that follows. So at, since I have all of these additional predecessor relationships in place, let's go back here a little bit, stop clicking on dates. Um, since we have all of these predecessor relationships in place, it's going to naturally follow that everything else would be delayed because all of their predecessors create this kind of dependency where my start dates have to update in order to catch that. Now, what you'll also find in here is a lot of the activity that we're seeing with these predecessor relationships as you're moving these things around are, are based on the number of work days and they're adjusting according to work days as well. This task that I have highlighted, for example, it's 10 working days, but it looks like it's spanning two and a half weeks. If you actually counted out the calendar days, it's much, much longer than you would think. These four days don't count as far as scheduling is concerned. For me, on this schedule at least. Now what you can do in this case is, there's an option to open up a toolbar that includes some additional features and functions for adjusting things. Like in my case, we could maybe add some tasks or groups as we like, like we did earlier with the right click menu or milestones for inspections. From the task menu, you can start indenting and outdenting, moving up and down. Again, these are all things that I now do in the right click menu. But as you continue moving through this, the tools menu here in the toolbar has some invaluable options for us to work with. As an example, We'll talk about scheduling for the calendars here, or templates rather, for the schedules here in just a couple of moments. When you're working with these, if you need to adjust the start date, there's an option here to define the start date and maintain all the relationships and everything like that here. Shifting the start date is an easy way to just move it back a week if something came up. Um, or maybe we move it forward in time as well if we can start earlier than we originally anticipated. These are easy options to go through and adjust those start dates here. More importantly, we can come into and start adjusting some of the work days and holidays and custom working days that we want to observe as we're going through this as well. So if I want to include Saturdays as work days, we have that option. This allows us to go in and create a six day work week instead of a five day work week. Maybe we have a couple of crews that are coming out and working together and they're able to do this while maintaining a reasonable workload. We could do something like this. It's also a fantastic way, by the way, to squeeze out quick projects, or if you're ever working like after hours or something like that, we've got a lot of commercial clients who work in um, live office spaces, like uh, medical facilities or something like that, where they try to do most of their work after hours when they don't have customers in the office, like the medical professions might not have their clients in the building, they can't stop working, but after hours, the contractors can go in and do their work. So maybe this is how we account for the less amount of time that we'd be using. You'll also find that we have holidays available in here. You can choose your country and choose what type of relationship that we're gonna have with the, the holidays that are typically observed in that country. If you click into the dropdown, there are numerous options. So go through and find the set that works for you. Then it's just a matter of checking off the holidays that you'd like to observe in this case. They become non-working days when you check them off. More importantly, you can create custom holidays here as well. Pick your date, add that as a custom holiday. It'll give you the option to define the holiday type as well. As you're working through this, this is a great way to respect your client's holiday observations as well. We've got a lot of clients that work, for example, with um, Jewish customers in New York City. 
And so they have a, a different set of holidays than we would typically observe in the United States. And adding those in means that you're respectful of your customer's time. And, and of course, they're going to appreciate this. Also, if you have a boss like mine, maybe adding in some holidays for birthdays would be appropriate. So things like that can be added in or included in well as well. And this way you can create a Gantt chart scheduling system that really flexes around anything that might come your way. It doesn't matter what it is, but you can set it up to have custom work days, custom holidays, uh, adjustable information everywhere. All of this information would come together here on the, the Gantt chart and it automatically takes these things into account from this point forward. Now, if you forgot to include those or you need to add some additional work days or something like that, you'll also find here in the tools menu, there's an option to compress the schedule as well. This is a fantastic tool as you're going through and you're kind of updating all of your tasks and moving things around because when you select the option to compress, this is going to squeeze out any potential excess time that you might have built in as delays if it's unnecessary. Now, one of my favorite stories is one that, uh, again, our owner will actually tell us about when he was building duplexes many, many years ago. Uh, he started off with a schedule for the duplexes that lasted about 90 days, roundabout, or at least this is what he described. So 90 days, three months to build one of these duplexes from start to finish. And the schedule was pretty tight. There wasn't a whole lot of wiggle room for other things like time off. Nobody, I see one of the comments here about adding in or, or having vacations built in and how none of us actually have those. Well, he didn't account for them either in those schedules. And so when things would come up, delays would happen, the schedule got, it went from being 90 days to the next duplex was maybe 95 days. And then the next one after that was 100 days and then 110 days and then 120 days and eventually six months long, 180 days uh, or thereabouts. Obviously, this was not working days. This was calendar days. But as he was building these things out, he started to account for more simple problems, like maybe subs that couldn't show up when they were scheduled to show up and they delay a, a day or two. And it just it all builds up till eventually he realized that it takes two or three times as long to build one of these duplexes as it did the first one. Now, that doesn't make any sense logically. It should take you less time as you do more and more of them not more. And so we added in this option to compress the schedule so that it eliminates a lot of those delays that were built in due to poor performance or people just over promising and under delivering and not showing up and not communicating this information. All of this, all of this became a part of it. And as you work through this, you'll be able to compress out any of those flex days that don't actually need to be there. It's a fantastic tool that you can use to help work with those predecessors and the uh, lead times and lag times and everything like that to make sure that everything is starting on the true early start date instead of on the newly adjusted because people are slow start date. So you've got all those options available. You'll also be able to come into and adjust the view as well if you wanted to see slightly less information at any given point. If we're looking at like a two week view, for example, you can adjust this so that it just shows this two weeks. It, as you can see here, it's just hiding everything that falls outside of that two week window or graying it out a little bit just to help us focus on what we have that we're working on. This is all of our activity for the two week window. Of course, you've got additional things like there's a one week window, there's a two week window, a four week window. We can go back to showing everything. There's also an option to show the critical path. And the way this works, as you can see here, it's actually going to go to the end of the schedule, to the finish date on the schedule. And it's going to work its way back using the fewest number of tasks that it can touch until it gets to the beginning of the schedule or until it hits a non dependent task. Now, what this means is if your last task is like some kind of a handoff and it's just a milestone or a single task that's not related to anything else, well, that is your critical path. When the handoff happens, since it's not related to anything else, it's just one thing, one task, one arbitrary date. Don't do that. Always make sure that you connect everything together so that the system can provide you a clear understanding of what the critical path looks like. The critical path in our case is the shortest path from beginning to end, which gives us a list of all the tasks that we need to focus on because a delay to any one of these is guaranteed to delay the schedule as a whole. 
and that's why this critical path is so important to us, it shows us where we don't have any wiggle room. These are all critical. We have to start and end these exactly when we plan to. Otherwise, the whole schedule is going to be out of whack. Now, along those lines, there's a fantastic tool to track how we're doing on these schedules as well. Now, we're, I'm going to zoom back out again uh, or kind of collapse this ta the, the schedule down a little bit because what we need to look at next is actually going to be set up as a baseline here as well. Now, as you're working through, there we go, right you are, Jordan. Um, as we're going through and taking a look at some of these additional options, when you scroll up to the top of the schedule, there's an option here to expand a dashboard specific to our scheduling in this case. And that dashboard gives us two valuable pieces of information, again, quickly or at a glance. When you're looking at the dashboard, you can take a look at the schedule progress, which is following a percent complete for all of these tasks. Again, if you right click on your tasks and edit these tasks, percentage complete, uh, percent completion is one of the items on that schedule or on that task. So you can go into and work with those here. As you mark this complete, you'll notice that the work days that are elapsing and the task completion should be roughly aligned over the course of the job. Now this is showing me where we've finished and the time frame that it should have been for where we finished, as opposed to where we are and the time frame that we should be at now. This is why workday elapsed, workdays elapsed looks much, much bigger than tasks completed. And that's in part because I have 152 tasks and it feels like I'm very behind schedule. That might just mean that we just need to go through and start marking things complete. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. But the other one that I wanted to touch on here was delays. Delays happen. Schedules are fantastic for coming up with a battle plan, but as we all know, plans are only as good, uh, no, how does the quote go? It's something like, no plan survives first contact with the enemy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so the idea here is you're putting together the schedule, and this is a fantastic little wish list. This is how we hope to have everything set up, but we all know, based on experience, that this is going to change. The first thing that we need to do then is create a carbon copy or a baseline of this schedule that says, Here's where we planned on being, initial start. Now any adjustments that we make after this point will be reflected and reportable here. So if there is a slight delay in the schedule, maybe one of the tasks that we're working on here takes a little bit longer than we originally thought. This is going to give us the ability to come back into and track which permits. Permits? Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. This is going to give us the ability to come into and track how much of an impact that delay might have. Now you'll notice that permitting, I delayed, and it didn't have an overall delay or an impact on the end date for the schedule. But if we're highlighting this one task in the baseline, this is going to show that we have slipped four days on this task. And that's substantial for this one because it were, originally it was only supposed to take eight days. It is now 50% longer, which usually means it's going to cost 50% more at least, if not more, depending on how we set up those tasks. Now, as you're looking through this, again, the baseline gives you the ability to drill down into groups or tasks or small segments of time. Again, take a look through areas like this where you can see the entire framing group still on schedule here. You can drill down into a specific task or as you saw right from the get-go, the, the default is to view the entire schedule. So whole schedule is still on track even though that one task was delayed. Again, you can be as granular as you like as you're working through this. You can also have as many baselines as you like. So I've got one for my initial start. So right now I've only got one in the drop-down. If we make some delays and then create a new baseline because Maybe there's some bad weather that came through. Um, polar vortex, or it's gonna be hurricane season in the south in a couple of months, a few months. When these things happen, when you have anything that causes a delay on the job, before you start moving things around, since the schedule is always live, you should always create a baseline that reflects everything prior to this change. Now again, all of that information is going to be gathered up here. D D I never said I could spell. <laughs> 
as you're going through and you're working with these things though, any of these kind of changes that you're making will now be reflected accordingly. And as you do make those changes, you'll start to see the impact from all these baselines and you can switch back and forth between the baselines to see how bad the impacts will be. You can start to get a better picture over time of what the biggest causes for those delays are based on these baselines, based on baselines. <laughs> but again, it's starting to give you all of this invaluable information about what these delays are, what causes these delays, Naming these baselines gives you a great way or an excellent way to go, kind of go through and set predictors on these things as well. If it's almost always weather that you see in the drop down for all of these baselines, maybe you add a stipulation into your contract just to make that clear to your customers. Or maybe as you're going through, if you find out that it's almost always customer delays because they're not choosing their selections on time. Perhaps we add that into the contract or reflect that accordingly, or maybe that's where we bring in an additional staff member to handle that selection process so that we stop missing on those. But again, these baselines start to give you a much better picture of what's actually creating these costly delays before any of that information kind of impacts you or impacts your jobs. Now along those lines, one thing that we did not do that we should do on all projects Whenever we're working on a schedule, there's an option to right-click and edit the task for the schedule. And in here, just like with the calendar activities, you can assign your resources here as well. Resources on these tasks will be anybody who's responsible for getting the work done or anybody who you want to have responsible for the people who are responsible. So again, project managers, or if you have like an office manager and this is part of the payment schedule perhaps or something like that, these may be assigned resources too. Just like with the calendar activities, those resources can get email or notifications and reminders sent to them directly from the tasks as well. So if a delay happens on the task, the reminder will follow that delayed task so that it still sends out to notify everybody involved at the right time, giving them the right information as well. You can set a number of different types of reminders here also. So you can have planning reminders, which default to about 10 days out, or starting reminders, which are a couple of days before typically, or even custom reminders that are all over the place. Maybe you've got a, a contractor that works with you that likes to get a reminder a month in advance. Strange, but Sure, send it out, create those reminders and the customer reminders can be a part of those tasks too. Again, all of this information can be assigned or individually kept with those tasks. More importantly though, all of this information from the schedule still shows back up back on the company calendar and the project calendar. So anybody who logs in to construction online either directly or through a client portal or a team link portal if you've given them the ability to see the calendar, they'll be able to see all of this information and any of the delays. If they use the mobile app, Construction Online, or one of the portal apps as well, they'll be able to get this information directly there as well. And of course, if you link it to a Google Calendar or an Office 365 account, and you decide to send this calendar to your Google Calendar, it'll, it'll erase or update any of those adjustments as well. Just keep in mind, it does not work the other direction. You cannot open, you can't update your schedules, your Gantt chart schedules from Google Calendar. Google was never built for that. They don't know how to handle predecessors. They don't work with any of those things well. So to make those updates, make sure that you're coming back here and doing this within Construction Online, which was designed to handle construction calendars. It's very important to do that. So what we have here then is, we have a company designed for the type of work that we all do. Um, we are, sorry, a calendar designed for the type of work that we all do. And it collects everything together that we need to pay attention to. This calendar is showing us everything that we should see. You'll also find that within the schedules, you have a lot of great resources for keeping up with who's responsible for what. Not just setting baselines, but also some additional tasks in here, like a, a simple little stoplight system for color coding your tasks to make sure that all the right people are showing up in the right places. You've got all of this additional information and it all comes together not only on your calendar but it also comes together in your game plan for construction online and the game plan is designed to go into all of these different features gather up all the information that you're assigning out as resources and it's designed to generate an automated report 
via email to anybody that you create that game plan for. If it's configured for the individuals, they will get everything that you put together. You invest your time in getting all of this information assigned out to the right parties. Game plan automatically collects it all together, puts it together in this beautiful, nice, little, neat email, fires it off to them as often as you want, and it's going to be available to them whenever they log into any of the apps as well. So they can pull it up from the app, they can pull it up from their email, they can print it out and take a paper copy with them everywhere they go. There's so many different ways for this information to come together, and your game plan feature here at the top automates all of it. So any of that time that you have spent in the past calling up your subs to tell them that they're supposed to be places, or firing off emails, or you might have an entire team of staff members who focuses on just chasing down all of these subs, or even your clients to get them to do everything like that, automate that. That's an easy process to automate and let them spend their valuable time on something more productive, like maybe selling more jobs, or maybe it's just gonna be that client relationship where we're gonna be taking a look through sales management to kind of focus in on, on in growing those relationships between customers or communities or whatever it might be. There's so many greater things that they can work on than chasing cats, and this is a fantastic tool that helps them save that time. Now, one last question too, before we kind of dive off into anything else, there's a, actually a few questions in here about adding change orders to your schedules, either both in construction suite or construction online, the desktop or the online. And for those of you who have worked with change orders in the past, you know that there is typically some kind of a schedule impact from those change orders. And that schedule impact is usually determined by the project manager when they're figuring out roughly how long this is going to take and if it's going to affect too many other things. It can be kind of arbitrary though because sometimes depending on the, what's being changed it might span multiple divisions or multiple categories or something like that as well. What I have found works best as you're kind of working through this um, is at any point within the schedule you can right click and add tasks Use these to represent those change orders. Ah, click into it. Change order two. And then from here, using those predecessor relationships, you can tie it into anything that might be impacted on this. So this might come in between construction utilities and portable restrooms for whatever reason. So in this case, we would say that we still have an 11 finished to start. And rather than changing portable restrooms, I'm just going to add an additional predecessor relationship. So comma 12, finish to start. And it will naturally kind of mold or move without or around all of these different things. So as you kind of shift this information around, um, you'll be able to get those change orders into the system and adjust it accordingly. There's also a follow-up question here as well, and this is going to be the last before we go into the, the actual questions portion. Construction online has a space to create several milestones within the schedule. Milestones are typically going to be zero-day tasks that are represented on the Gantt chart as a diamond. So as you're coming through and you're taking a look at some of the information on here, you'll actually find in some of these spaces the... Um, ah, yeah, let's pull it back in here, find a zero day task, here's one, the inspection. These milestones are available in your client selections section to be linked between the selection due date and the milestone itself. Now in this case, if we've got footers inspections or a slab inspection and we wanted to start getting all of the windows and doors selections done before the slab inspection is finished or around the same time, maybe that's our deadline, in this case, we could go into the financials portion of this job, take a look under client selections, and start browsing some of the available milestones to attach to our selections. Let's say, well, let's just use some kitchen floors and carpets and such. In this case, when you open up one of these selections, there's a now a milestone dropdown that exists because we created milestones in the schedule. When you click on the drop down, it gives us all the different milestones from the schedule so we can start to build in connections between the selections and their due dates and the calendar, uh, or sorry, and the schedule, the Gantt chart schedule, and the inspection dates or the milestones. So we're starting to connect some dots to make sure that even our customer 
is going to be driven by this Gantt chart schedule to make sure that they're getting everything done when it has to be done, when we absolutely need it, so that they understand how their, in, their contributions can be impacted by this as well. So again, take a look for this. Once you've created those milestones, you can start to make these connections where previously you may not have. And this, once again, just allows for the automation for a lot of things like this. Now, I'm a huge fan of the milestone connection here in the selections because project templates exist on Construction Online. When you put together a project template, you can actually have everything in that project template. Everything from folders and files to estimates and schedules. You can have a complete selection catalog available in that project template too. If you do build that selection catalog and you've got a schedule with milestones, you can connect these things so that when you open up the schedule and set the project start date, your selections automatically update accordingly as well. So again, you're starting to build in all of these automation steps very, very simply so that they can automate all of this work that you guys probably spend hours or days on various different projects just typing into the platform. Now you don't have to. Put it in a project template, connect everything there, and then you can, again, streamline all these steps all through that project template process, which again, if you're looking for project templates or scheduled templates for that matter, come back to the company overview, switch over to company projects, and when you're here under the templates portion, you can find all the project templates, the estimate templates, the schedule templates, and you can start putting all this information together here. Or we can come back to any of the schedules and from here, create templates from them using some of the drop-down options out to the right side. Again, many, many ways to get all of this information into the system and the platform. And as you guys are working with this, you have some fantastic options for putting those together here too. Um, looks like I mentioned this earlier, but I didn't actually show you guys. Importing Microsoft Project Schedules usually happens when you're generating a new schedule. New schedules can be created from scratch, created from construction online templates, or in this case, imported from a Microsoft project file here as well. Simply select the option that's appropriate and go from there. I saw a question come in actually about Microsoft project file imports and that was touching somewhat on uh, the dates uh, appearing in the construction online schedule. Something to keep in mind if you import a Microsoft project schedule, make sure that you double check the work days and holidays that you have enabled in Construction Online to make sure they match up with the settings that you had in Microsoft Project or that they match the original settings because it could be that uh, you need to make a few adjustments once you've imported the schedule in to line up with the settings you had in Microsoft Project. Just something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, again, at this point, we are coming to the end of our webinar covering staying on track with scheduling and calendars. Uh, we are at about the end of that hour block. But it looks like in this case, we've actually taken care of most of those questions already. Now, if you guys do have any last questions, please feel free to chime in with those as you guys are working through it. We'll take a few more minutes to cover any of those questions. But for everything else, don't forget, the last in the Construction Online series of webinars this week is Friday covering boosting your bottom line with new construction online estimating where we're going to actually take a deep dive into some of those features that we've included over the past few weeks and months for new construction online like setting custom views for these estimates or taking a look at how some of the integration works with some of our accounting partners like QuickBooks or, or QuickBooks Online depending on which one you guys are using. So don't forget to join us at 3 o'clock central on Friday February 8th where we start to cover some of these additional features as well. And uh, at that time, we'll be showing you guys all the tips and tricks which are new for construction online and for our estimating platform in here as well. Stay tuned for that one too. One quick question that I'd like to touch base on because we just found one of maybe three questions that Sydney wasn't able to or hadn't got around to tackling yet, perhaps. I think that she's been well on top of you guys so far. She's kept up with all the questions and everything like that, again, except for a couple that she's asked us to show. One of those in particular is actually available within each project under the reporting section for calendars and schedules. So if we come into 
um, one of these projects in particular and take a look under schedule reports, you'll actually find a wide variety of, of reporting capabilities available on Construction Online. The one in particular that she asked for is the work order. Now, the, the work order is uh, in Construction Online, it's going to be a report that outlines everything that's been assigned to a particular resource, um, typically from one of the schedules that you guys have created, although it can include other things as well, like, again, meetings or, or calendar activities or tasks, whatever it may be. When you're taking a look at the work order itself, the most important part as you're working through this is selecting who we're going to be generating this work order for. Now, as you're putting this work order together, generally it wouldn't be for yourself, but you can do this. Um, you'll be assigning the individual to the work order, choosing the start, the start date for the date range. And if you have an end date, you can apply that here as well. Otherwise, it just provides this for the specific project from start date until the end of time or the end of that job. Once again, you can also include any of the following types of information on the report. Uh, details like calendar events and appointments, um, to-dos or tasks that have been assigned to the individual, punch list items, anything that would typically show up on the calendar can be included in this work order. You can put the information together here and when you select print, it'll give you a PDF first and when it generates the PDF at that point you can either send it out via email or print a physical copy if you'd like. Uh, this print option is generally used to print a PDF to provide all of that detail for the report as well as you work. If you joined us for our document and file management webinar previously, you could also save the report into a linked folder to automatically share the document with whoever needs access to it. Or you could save it into your project files and share it out uh, on demand from there. There's all sorts of different options that you could uh, take advantage of with this work order report or any of the reports in the platform for that matter. You Also, when you generate these reports as you're working through them, you'll have the ability to go into and add some additional information or some detail. All of these reports that you're generating can be edited directly before you save them and share them. Um, there is a text editor on Construction Online as well. It works very much like OnPoint that we have in the desktop or like Microsoft Word or, or Google Docs or anything like that. You guys can go into and make some adjustments, add some imagery, put in some uh, additional details or boilerplate information, whatever you need. All of that information can be added before you send it as well. So you guys have complete flexibility and customizability on these reports as well before they go. Take a look at, at working through that. If you guys are interested in making some adjustments, you'll find all of that information is online and available to you guys here as well. Um, beyond that, I think that there's only one other question, which is a simple one, that, that uh, we haven't addressed yet. Again, thank you, Sydney, for being able to keep up with these questions so well. But the one question that's left on my list down here at the bottom is which versions of Microsoft Project can be imported? And that's actually it's a great question. I don't know that we check versions too much. I know that it's worked back as far as Microsoft Project 2003. Um, <clears throat> most of the file formats that we're looking for, by the way, regard the uh, are in, in regards to the XML file format, I believe. I think we can also pull in MPP files as well. Um, but uh, if you guys have any questions about a schedule, I would say try to import it first. And if you guys have any follow-up questions regarding that, send it our way. Um, you've got our email information as well. So if there's any uh, unique information, you can work with that. Now as a follow-up to this, you'll also be able to get similar file formats out of just about any Gantt chart scheduling platform as well. They all export an XML file format that they usually refer to as the MS project file. So if you guys are moving from some of the other scheduling platforms that are kind of similar to an, an MS project, like uh, maybe SureTrack or Primavera or um, uh, not T-Sheet, Smartsheet, most of them have the ability to export into an XML file format as well that, that MS Project recognizes, and so do we. So if you guys are moving away from some of those platforms into ours, great news. We can pull all the information that you need and we can run with it from there too. Um, beyond that though, I believe that that does close out all the questions that we have today. Don't forget if you guys have any follow-up questions, you can always reach, uh, reach out to us by phone or by email. Again, I uh, believe that information has been posted. Let me double check. Yes, 
yeah, all the information is there <laughs> in the chat logs. So take a look there. You guys will also be able to, to reach out to us from the reminder email that we're going to be sending out or the follow-up email that we send out afterwards. All the contact information will be there too. So let us know if you guys have any other follow-up questions or anything else kind of pops into your head about this. Otherwise, once again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure covering some of these great new features that we have in Construction Online New, and hopefully we'll have a chance to talk again on Friday as we dive into some of the fantastic estimating tools and some of those QuickBooks integration features as well, something that, of course, I'm very keen on talking about as one of the QuickBooks Pro Advisors here on staff. But again, as we, guys, as we take a deep dive into those feature sets, we'll take a look at how we can do um, nice, professional, very detailed estimates on Construction Online, create a repeatable process, but most importantly, track our job costing as we're going through these jobs as well. All of this and more is available on Friday as we dive into boosting your bottom line with new construction online estimating. For now though, this is going to wrap everything that we have for you guys again. Thanks so much for joining us and if we don't talk to you before then, we'll see you Friday. Thanks again everyone. Take care.